Welcome back. The planning step is still developed process. The process is designed, but there remains the matter of designing for process control, the means for setting and adjusting the process to consistently meet product and process goals. Design for process control is the subject of this session. An essential component of a successful quality plan is provision for process control. Control consists of evaluating the actual performance of the process, comparing actual performance with goals, and taking action on the difference. These control activities take place in a systematic arrangement called a feedback loop. It works this way. A sensor, which is plugged into the process, measures actual performance. The sensor reports this information to what we will call an umpire. The umpire may be a piece of hardware or a human being. The umpire also receives information on what is the goal or standard. The umpire then compares the actual performance to the goal. If the difference warrants action, the umpire energizes an actuator. The actuator changes process conditions so as to bring performance into line with the goals. A simple example is the control of a forced air home heating system. The thermostat might be set at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. 68 degrees is the goal. When the thermostat senses the air temperature to be less than 68 degrees, its signal actuates the furnace to start up and deliver more warm air into the system. When the air temperature at the thermostat again reaches 68 degrees, the thermostat signals the furnace to shut down. All control is centered around control subjects, specific things to be controlled. Some control subjects are derived directly from features of the product, such as the diameter of a hole or the legibility of print in a report. Other control subjects are derived from features of the process, such as drill torque or printer ribbon replacement schedule. Still other control subjects are unrelated to either product features or process features. However, these may create troublesome side effects, such as irritations to employees, offense to the neighborhood, or threats to the environment. Some process control is centered on these side effect features. Planning for process control is a series of specific activities. First, identify the control subjects. Then, build a feedback loop around each control subject. Next, establish the process control criteria, such as rules for data collection and analysis, and rules for decision making. Also, establish corrective action steps. Also identify who is to carry out each step of the feedback loop. Finally, establish audit procedures to assure that the control plan is followed. Operating processes are influenced by numerous variables input materials, physical facilities, human skills, environmental conditions, and so on. These variables are not equally important. Often one variable is more important than all the rest combined. Such a variable is said to be the dominant variable. The concept of the dominant variable is an important aid to process designers. Once designers know which variable is dominant, they can focus control on that variable. Some processes exhibit high stability and reproducibility of results over many cycles of operation. Examples are printing or batch data processing. Such processes are said to be setup dominant. The process control design should provide means for precise setup and validation before operations proceed. Some processes are time-dominant. The process changes progressively with time. 
An example is wire drawing, where the process changes due to tool wear. The process design must emphasize means for periodically evaluating the extent of change, or even predicting change and providing for convenient adjustments. In component dominant processes, the dominant variable is the quality of the input materials and components. Many mechanical assembly processes are component dominant. For a fast food restaurant, the dominant variable is often the raw material, the frozen potatoes or the meat patties. Such processes require close quality control of the input components, preferably within the supplier's organization. Some processes are worker dominant. Quality depends mainly on the skill and knack possessed by the workers. Examples are teller operations in retail banking or electric arc welding. The process design should emphasize aptitude testing of workers, training and certification, quality rating of workers, and error proofing to reduce worker errors. Still other processes are information dominant. Examples are job shop production scheduling and order entry. In such processes, the job information changes frequently. The process design should concentrate on providing an information system which can deliver accurate, up-to-date information to all who are impacted. Many modern service processes are information dominant. Airline scheduling and telecommunications network management are two typical examples. They involve vast streams of information on which complex decisions are executed, often in real time. Ideally, planning for process control will place the operating forces in a state of self-control. In a state of self-control, the worker performs all the steps in the feedback loop. To create a state of self-control, the planners must provide the operating forces with three things. First, the means of knowing what is their target performance, the goals and standards. Secondly, the means of knowing what is their actual performance, the system of measurement. And finally, the means for adjusting the process to bring performance into line with goals and standards. These conditions imply an operating performance which is inherently capable of meeting the goals and which can be adjusted as needed to bring it into conformance with the goals. Control decisions are required at several stages of the operating process. Following setup, the needed decision is whether to push the start button. Typically, startup control involves first a countdown, which lists the preparatory steps needed to get the process ready to produce. Next, measurement of the process and or product features to determine whether if the process is started up, the resulting product will meet product goals. And finally, acceptance criteria as aids to the startup decision. In running control, the decision is whether the process should continue to run, should be adjusted, or should be stopped. Running control takes place periodically during the operation of the process. Running control consists of closing the feedback loop over and over again. The process performance is evaluated and compared with goals. In the absence of a significant difference, the decision is continue to run. If the difference is too great, corrective action is in order. One of the most commonly used quality tools in process control is the Schuhart control chart. The control chart provides a very easy way of recording process measurements and identifying which fluctuations in process data are due to real changes and which are false alarms. When coupled with clear instructions on what action to take when a control limit is exceeded, the control chart becomes a simple, effective process control tool. Process control should also provide for process adjustment. 
From the viewpoint of the operating forces, the ideal system of process adjustment includes certain provisions. First, each product feature is linked to a single process variable. Second, means are provided for convenient adjustment of the process setting for that variable. Finally, there is a predictable, precise relationship between the amount of change in the process setting and the amount of effect on the product feature. For complex processes, these ideal provisions can be difficult and even forbidding. However, the process designers are making visible progress. Think of the adjustments available today compared to several decades ago. Think of the process of making copies of important papers. Today's modern copiers provide us with many automated process controls and adjustments, and many others we can control ourselves. Another familiar example is cruise control on an automobile. The sensor measures the car's speed and adjusts the throttle to maintain the speed within narrow control limits. Similar changes have evolved in the control systems for modern production lines, power plants, and machine tools. In some cases, the planning has made it easy to adjust the process. Turn this calibrated knob until the green light comes on. Remove this cartridge and insert a replacement. In such cases, the workforce can be trained to carry out the corrective actions and restart the process. In other cases, the process planning may not have provided simple ways to make process adjustments. In such cases, the workforce may be forced to cut and try or shut down the process and call for assistance. Product control takes place after some amount of product has been produced. In product control, the needed decision is whether the product conforms to product goals. The control steps associated with product control parallel those needed for startup control and running control, measurement, criteria for decision making, and so on. The product conformance decision can be delegated to anyone who knows the goals, can make the measurements, and can objectively determine the difference. The information system should provide prompt feedback of product quality results to those who can act on the information. When a product quality problem arises, such feedback helps to trigger action to find and eliminate the cause. To carry out process control requires providing for process measurement. Process measurement must have the accuracy and precision adequate for the application. Recall that precision of measurement is the ability of a sensor to reproduce its results on repeat test. The process designer should evaluate measurement accuracy and precision through planned experiments. For example, in order to determine the accuracy and consistency of inspectors, they may be asked to make repeat examinations of the same product. In all processes, the trend has increasingly been to use automation, computers, robots, and the like. This same trend makes product quality more and more dependent on good maintenance of facilities. The elements of planning for facilities control are well known. First, establish a schedule for conducting facilities maintenance. Then, establish a checklist, a list of tasks to be performed during maintenance. Finally, assign clear responsibility for adherence to schedule. The weak link in this has been adherence to schedule. Until the operating forces acquire the habit of strict adherence to schedule, the planning should include an independent audit as a form of assurance. The plan for process control may involve many details. The process features are numerous. Each requires a feedback loop. To keep track of all these details, planners need a process control spreadsheet. Each spreadsheet row 
is devoted to one process feature carried over from the process design spreadsheet. The columns correspond to process control features. The number of process control features depends on the level of detail of the process design. As a minimum, each spreadsheet row must provide the information necessary to describe the feedback control loop for the corresponding process feature. In the case of the automotive heating system, the process feature corresponding to the first row is solder the heater core. The goal is no leaks. The sensor during production will be a test in which the core is pressurized with air while immersed in a water bath. The umpire's pass criterion is no bubbles. If there are bubbles, the umpire communicates with the solder process in order to effect an appropriate change. The details, who is the umpire, how often is the test conducted, what constitutes an appropriate change in the process, are assigned to the Climate Control Division, CCD. In installing the blower fan, the goal is to mount the fan on the motor shaft. The sensor is the assembly operator, whose criterion is that the fan is fully seated. CCD is responsible to put the operator in a state of self-control. The operator knows the goal and is sensor, umpire, and actuator. In the process of adding coolant, the goal is a full cooling system. Sensing is done by an automatic meter, which shuts off when the system is full. Adequate maintenance of that automatic equipment is assigned to BNAO, body and assembly operations. Process control is achieved by application of the feedback loop. Actual process performance is measured compared to the performance goal and action is taken on the difference. Where one process input variable has a dominant effect on the process output, the planning of process control may be focused on that variable. One objective of process control in non-critical processes is to put workers into a state of self-control. Control decisions are required at several stages of the operating process. Process measurement must have the accuracy and precision adequate for the control application. Where there is use of automated processes, facilities control is an important part of process control. The design of process control involves a sequence of activities. Identify control subjects, identify means for controlling each, establish control criteria, establish procedures to meet the criteria, identify who will execute the procedures, and establish an audit process to assure control is being faithfully executed. The process control spreadsheet is an aid to planning for and summarizing process control. Once the process is developed, you should optimize the process goals. Optimize process is the next step and the subject of the next session. I'll see you then. <laughs>